Now, Mike, and if someone comes forward and says, this is BS, and I'm going to show you why, and he's going to show how what you're showing is not the truth and invalid, and you're going to give them the time to speak and show the evidence, this person will get $5 million, right? $5 million at that symposium. That'll be live streamed on TV. That's why we put up the $5 million, or I put up the $5 million myself. My pillow guy learning a lesson the hard way this afternoon that if you're going to put your money where your mouth is, you better be careful with what comes out of it. He called it the Prove Mike Wrong Challenge to bunk what he claimed was data evidence of Chinese interference in the 2020 election. And wouldn't you know it, someone did. Now, after a ruling from a federal judge affirming an earlier decision in arbitration, Mike Lindell has 30 days to pony up. $5 million to a Nevada computer forensics expert who voted for Donald Trump twice. Joining me now, writer at large for The Bulwark and MSNBC contributor Tim Miller. You know, Tim, life comes at you fast. It does. It does. Do you think, was that Judge Judy or Judge Joe Brown, do you think, that, uh, <laughs> that issued that verdict for, uh, for old Mike? I hope he's got a lot of pillows to sell. Um, you know, you shouldn't. Another lesson for this, a good life lesson, Alicia, is if you get invited on the Glass Off Group uh, YouTube show, that's something to stay away from. <laughs> okay. Only bad things that can happen when you get on these far right shows. Uh, I mean, it is, it is easy to, and I will continue to mock Mike Lindell because it's fun, uh, but it is, it's worth. Hey, it, it's worth it. I'm glad for the guy that got the five million. Somebody had to hold this guy to account. This guy was in the White House. He was, yes. As crazy as it is, the pillow salesman was in the White House, in the Oval Office, talking to the president of the United States about a coup between the election and January 6th. And so, um, you know, it's important that people that uh, you know, mess with fire get burned. And, and, and he's gotten burned a few times, I think. This is just the latest. I just want to say, it gets even wilder. This is from The Washington Post. Lindell testified at arbitration that he did not share what he had described as his key data to support the foreign intrusion claim during the conference. He held off, he said, after a man seeking a selfie poked him in the side as the symposium was nearing an end, an act that Lindell called an assault and said he took as a signal the government might tamper with his central information if he made it public. Lindell told the panel that after the incident, his red team, that's in quote, advisors, warned him against making that information public. They said it could be a poison pill put in the data and we really shouldn't release the China stuff. It's, it's a little bit like reading Mad Libs, I'm going to be honest, Tim. The, the problem is that is a reminder of just how far these folks were willing to go to prop up the big lie, right? To sort of point the finger at a, a type of election interference that was not happening while avoiding that which was. Yeah, that was tough to follow. So a deep state person was poking him and was going to mm -hmm. take his yeah. secret information. Yeah, that was right. the theory mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I just, uh, this is, I think, uh, you know, there was something that I used to, well, I, I monitor Steve Bannon's show, and uh, there was a theory that they were putting out for a while about about us, those of us in reality, that, that we are suffering a mass formation psychosis. And, and I think that that was projection. Uh, because listening to Mike Lindell, it seems like this person is suffering uh, psychosis. And he spread his personal psychosis to really a dangerous amount of people, way too many people that have bought into this. And, um, and I think that eventually you kind of buy your own BS and, and you find yourself in a situation where you're making a $5 million offer you can't, uh, you can't follow through on. I'm not sure if you follow this. The Supreme Court this week declined to take up an appeal from Trump lawyers who advanced the big lie, people like Sidney Powell, people like Lynn Wood. You're, you're starting to see accountability in all different forms for people who carried his water. This is so. On the one hand, this is really good, Alicia, and I'm happy that there's accountability. On the other hand, it is. It really does uh, hit home how striking it is that people are getting back on board for this for another yes. round. Yes. Right. I, I just. I don't understand the people that are working for Donald Trump right now, Lena Haba and, and his campaign staff. Uh, like, don't they look at Lindell and and Linwood and Powell and all Rudy and all these people and think this is going to be me? If I stick with this guy, and that's the thing that's so distressing about all this, that, that the accountability is good, but the fact that we're going through it again, even after this accountability, is, is frustrating. Thank you.